Once you know what pages you're going to have on your site, the next step is to create a wireframe. A wireframe is done to show where things will be placed on your website. I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible. I'm going to start with a canvas that's 1060 by 1000. It gives me a good basis for a website. And then we're going to start with working with some of the layers and fireworks and what it means to create a wireframe. For me, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just set the background by drawing a large box, making sure it's black. And I'm using black not because I would want a black background, but because the wireframe should always be grayscale. And I do this in grayscale because it's like a blueprint for a house. When you're working on your blueprint for your new house, you're not worried about whether or not the cabinets in the kitchen are cherry or oak or what color the floor is going to be. You're figuring out which way is the window, which, where, where are the windows going to be, where's the kitchen sink, where are you going to put the refrigerator. The wireframe is all about where you're going to put things. And for me, I like to typically do a design, and I'll do another layer on top of this. First I want to select a new box. So I'm going to put a layer on top of this and on the new box I'm going to draw this in here and I'm not going to make it perfect. I'm not worried about it right now. I'm going to change the inside to white and then I can go into the bottom and I can go into my rectangle sizes and I want my width here to be 960 by 960 again. We'll actually make it a square. <clears throat> and then I want my X and Y coordinates to be um, 50 for my X coordinate and 5 for my Y coordinate. That's just a personal thing and this is setting up my web page. And when I'm in here I want to go into my layers and I have these two layers that I am going to let me bring the layers level out here. I'm going to name these. This is going to be body because this is what my body color is going to be. I always, when I start on my next page, the storyboard, when I get into colors and graphics, I always take my wireframe and just modify it. So I'm setting things up exactly the same thing way they would be when I start creating my web page. So I'll have a body, I'll have a container, and then I can lock these layers so that I can't accidentally select them and do anything to them. And then for the different areas on my page, these are going to be my div tags. I'm going to use a, another rectangle and I'm going to set the inner color here into a light shade of gray because I just want to block off where I'm going to have various parts of my page. So at the top part of my page, this would be my masthead. And you can either have it set like this or you can and here I don't want a line. Or you could potentially run it the entire width, 960. And I'd set a height of here, I'd want maybe 100. Depends on if you want to put, and we'll put it at 50, and we'll put it at 5, and I should be exactly where, that's where my masthead would go. Now I, if I want to put buttons in here, I would make it a little bit larger. So I'm going to basically lay out my div tags, the, which logically divide my page into sections. And typically for me, and this is a very standard simple layout, you can do something a lot more original and creative, but I'm typically going to want a div for my header, a div for my footer, and I would actually label these here. And again I want to, let me select my header, select my footer and they may or may not be the same color as the rest of the page when I'm done with this and get colors in here. But I'm logically breaking down where my page sections are going to be. And this one does not want to lose its 
border. Let's just make it non-existent. There we go. Okay, so I have where my header would go, I have where my footer would go, and each site that I do, um, they are all going to have slightly different navigation, and they're usually going to have a different wireframe for the first page than for the inside pages of the site. So in this front page, I'm going to have some simple things, and I don't usually put text in here except for major things like my masthead, where I know what it's going to be, and so my masthead will be... Oh, I don't want to lock that one. It's not locked, okay. So select text, go in here, maryhelp.net. If I was going to put a logo, I would just leave a box for it. I want to change the size on this. But here I'm really going to want to have top level navigation. And so I can put in buttons. And I like to typically use my different objects in my common library. So I'm going to go into my HTML option and I'm going to look at my buttons. And I'm just going to leave them all gray at this point and I'm just going to drag buttons in here. And so you'll notice it changes green, it has lines underneath it. This is going to actually allow me to create a real prototype here because I can actually link these to the other pages of my wireframe as I put them in and I'm using my alt button to move things over. I'm using my arrow, my arrow key. Is the alt key plus an arrow key will make a copy of this. So I'm going to end up with five buttons in my top level navigation. And for the top level navigation I do actually want to indicate what's going to be up here. I know that they're going to be buttons. Or, um, I don't know what they're going to look like. It could be a long button bar. I'm just trying to figure out placement. And I would go into the symbol properties on each of these symbols. And I also want to go in and I want to make them aligned and look nice so we can play with my line. There we go. Line bottom edge works for that. I wanted to distribute, not align. Ooh. Command Z. Match width and height. Space evenly. Command Z is a wonderful thing. Get these sort of lined up. These are overlapping a little. I don't like that. So I can come in here and mess with these. I'm not going to make it perfect because it gets really painstaking to make everything perfect and I don't want to take that time on video. But I have my buttons set up here and I'm going to change my view to zoom in on these. And on the first button I'll select it. Let me bring my symbol properties up underneath it so you can see how it changes. And here I'm just going to change to what my links would be. So I'm going to have Java script the next one will be web scripting. Web design. Logic. And resources. Now this would be a common portion of my wireframe that would be the same for every page. The other thing that I really want to include here, because it's going to be a large site when I'm done, is I want to include
in my HTML. I've got buttons, checkboxes, combo boxes, headings, links, list items, text area. Text field, yep, that's what I want. So I'd have a text field here. Got to go back to page one. I accidentally double clicked. Change my properties for this. Text equals text. Enter search values. And so now properties. Make sure that's selected. Symbol properties. Text. Enter. Search. Text. That'll appear there. And I would probably want another button. Here. And this button should say search because you want to be logical and typically people are going to expect a search area up here in the top. So I'll change the text on that button to search and that gives me the basic layout of what's going to be the common structure for my pages. I could go a little bit further than this. All of my pages are going to be the same front page and inner page for header and footer so in the bottom I would want to include and we'll change the lost my properties here so we'll change the properties here for the size we'll bring that down and typically what I'm going to want to put on the footer is how I want people to contact me I might also have a site map so my footer here is going to be Mary at maryhelp.net. That address does not actually exist, so don't try and email it. It may exist at some point, but right now it does not. And then I would add potentially a sitemap replicating what I have up on top. And so I would put in text here to represent Java script. And I usually separate things by pipes. So JavaScript, web scripting, web design, logic, resources, and home. I always like to give people a fast way to go back home. Though typically I would make a logo on the top represent that as well. So here I am getting a basic page layout. And so what I might do here, move this over, if I'm going to represent, gee, I'd like to have a logo, I don't have one yet, how I would represent that would be a simple box. And I'll typically make that black, two pixels. The inside should be white. And I would put a box here representing where I would have a logo. And to represent that it's a picture, you will typically draw two lines through it, and that represents picture content. So that's the first step in my creating a wireframe. It's not done yet by any means, but that's the start of my common content. In the next video, I'll show you how to take it to multiple pages. So I'd want to save my file. Wireframe and save. So make sure you save your work frequently and this is our start of our wireframe. We'll go further than this in the next video.